Have you ever wondered, how does NeoVim know what kind of file I'm editing? When I open a .lua file, how does it start doing Lua highlighting and apply Lua specific config options? How does it know that when I edit a file ending in .rs, it opens as a Rust file? Or when I open my .bashrc file, that doesn't really have a specific bash kind of file ending. How does it know that that particular file is a shell script? Well, that system is called file types in Vim and NeoVim. NeoVim has a slightly different way of configuring and working with some of the file type options, but overall the ideas are still quite similar. In NeoVim, we have a very cool global called Vim file type, and what it does is it gives you the possibility of adding new file type mappings. Now, these file type mappings are provided by default in NeoVim for I don't know, basically all the normal cases that you run into. So you usually won't have to use vim.filetype.add to create your new ones, but it is helpful if you have some files on your system that are maybe custom for the company that you're working on, or you have some of your own language or whatever it is. In these cases, this is how you could sort of configure and tell any of them, hey, every time you open a file that looks like this, please set it to this file type. So that's sort of the step one in determining the system. We'll give a few examples here. There are a few in the help documentation, but the primary ones that you would probably be using are either the extension field or the file name field. The extension field just says, hey, if a file ends with foo, right? So like my file dot foo, then set the file type to foo script. If we have it bar, in this case, instead of providing a string, we can provide a function that checks the path and buff number and says, okay, uh, do we have some condition? Maybe this would be like checking if we're using some particular keyword or a shebang or so, right? You could check a bunch of different options here. And if so, then you could return bar script. Otherwise you might return bar. For file name, this is that similar idea of saying like, okay, if we see a dot bash RC, we know that that file is actually a shell script, or maybe you have something like a dot Rust toolchain file, and that should always be Toml. Those are ways that you can sort of set, in a sense, like random files uh, to particular file types whenever you open them. A quick example of this might be if we did something like, let's make a new file and we'll just call it ftlua for me. And we'll do something like vim.file type add, and let's just make an extension of something like, okay, if it's arch, let's set it to arch Linux as the type, okay? Now we'll change it to arch wiki because that's actually cool and useful. So now if I source this file here, now, whenever I open a file that has a .arch extension, it's going to set the file type to archwiki. So if I do example.arch, you can see actually now, right there, it sets the file type to archwiki. We can confirm that with doing something like echo file type, um, file type here, and we'll see that it says archwiki. So that's sort of part one. That's determining what the file is. However, the thing that's probably more interesting for you is, how can I do something based off of that? And the primary way that we do that is with these things called FT plugins, FT standing for file type. So these are file type plugins. And in your config, so if I go to config and Vim, and then I usually put mine in after, this just means please run these after the default ones that are sort of included in NeoVim, right? If you wanna override a setting, for Lua, you could put it in after FT plugin Lua.Lua. .lua. In this case, though, we want to do something for the ArchWiki file type. And so we can set ArchWiki.Lua here. And if you'll notice here, I have a few options just to show you what this is going to do. I could set like a buffer local variable, or I could set some options locally, or we can we can do any number of things. We could set a key map. I'll give you an example in my Rust FT plugin. I set a key map here that says, hey, when I press F5, you know, to continue my debugging session or start a new debug session. And this key map is only set up for the current file. You can set different format options and many other different things like this. So if I have this as my ArchWiki Lua sort of FT plugin, when I open that example Arch file and I press hello and I press tab, when I press enter, we're going to get a ridiculously sized 10 space indent, right? And then when I press backspace, it's going to be done, right? Because that's what I set the shift with here equal to 10. If we changed this to say two, 
saved the file, and then reopened this example arch file, the next time that I go for an indent, it's only going to set it to. So each time you open a file of a particular file type, it will sort of resource that FT plugin file. Um, we could we could do another example where maybe we say uh, we set something like account equals count or zero, right? So I can set some global count variable here. And then I can do count equals count plus one, right? So this is like what's gonna happen every single time I open this file. And if I go into here and I do Lua print, or we could do equals count, it's gonna say nil. I haven't made that variable yet. But if I open the file again, now I'll see that I have one, right? That's what this one prints out here. And if I edit the file again, it's going to say two. So you can sort of see that each time we're doing this, this file is getting run over and over and over for the current buffer. And with those two tools, you can actually really easily set sort of all the different kind of configuration maybe that you usually need uh, for a particular file type, right? If you want to change how comments are formatted or when they're added, right, with uh, you saw in maybe my, my Rust example here, by the way, I changed the format options. If we read help format options, you can see here, uh, this is in the add option flag or in the um, FO table here, that O says automatically insert the current common leader after hitting O or O in normal mode. So for some languages, I like that it automatically inserts the common and other languages I don't. I Upon saying it out loud, I don't really know why I feel that way <laughs> about some of them, but uh, th this way works pretty nicely, I think, uh, for me. And so in this case, I just make sure that I don't want those when I'm writing Rust. Maybe it's because I have to write more comments to help me remember what I did. I don't know. But armed with this knowledge of both the vim.filetype.add to be able to add your own custom file types and understanding what FT plugins are, remember, you just use FT plugin and then file type, and then dot Lua like this. <clears throat> and I usually put mine in after to make sure that they get sourced later. That's really all you need to know to understand both how does NeoVim find out what file type something is, and then as well, how does NeoVim set custom settings for that particular file. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll see y'all later.